Thelonious C. Jones. Today I'm going to be talking about investing in the ghetto. Three suggesting strategies to be successful real estate investing in the ghetto. My background is investing in the real estate and in the ghetto. That's my background. I've been doing it since 2009. I manage a portfolio of single family homes and apartments in Southwest Atlanta, which most consider the ghetto, the hood. Um, so I have extensive background. Um, so extensive. I had so many issues with property managers and property managers issues. People not want to even want to manage in that area that I had to manage my portfolio. And through that, I created my own book called The Landlord Blueprint, landlordblueprint.com, um, that gives solutions, techniques, resources to decrease headache and increase cash flow when investing anywhere. But my background was in, get, in the ghetto, which usually you have seemingly a little more headaches than other places. So I just want to create a system that will kind of alleviate those headaches and make life a little easier. So let's talk about the keys to be successful when investing in the ghetto. Let's talk about the keys to that. First of all, I think one of the main keys is tenants, finding good tenants. You have to find good tenants. You have to find tenants that want to do long term, um, maybe lease agreement. Maybe you get them on a two or three year lease and excuse me, you, you lower the rent a little bit, uh, 10 or $15. Get the long term. It'll save you money. It'll save you trying to get $800 off a six month lease or one year lease instead of doing 70, 775 on a three year lease. And maybe that's someone that's to stay longer. So get good tenants, do your background check, do your credit check, follow up on the references and the referrals. If and I have all of this information and documentation is in the landlord blueprint, but say you want to do it yourself, say, um, you know, you don't want to do it yourself. Here's two other solutions. If you want to do it yourself, just make sure you do your background check, your credit check, and call people. Like I just said, call the references, call the jobs, call the past landlords. Say you don't want to do this. Say you don't have time to do this. There's plenty of services that will do it for you for a fee. So look up those services online, but you must find a good tenant. Another way is uh, Section 8, Housing Authority. Look up your house, local housing authority. Most of the Section 8 residents are going to stay two or three years or longer. Um, Section 8 in the Housing Authority was not put in place for the tenant to rent out your house for six months or a year and then leave. It's not made for that. It's made for stability. So that is also something else you could check out. There are also other state programs, state funded programs you can check out um, that may work for your property when you're investing in the ghetto. So just check that out. Number two, uh, the number two biggest thing I think is communication. When tenants call, call them back, get back to them. Stop waiting a week to call people back. Just communicate. You know what I mean? Obviously, if the people are living in an inner city or in an environment, some people, it they don't mind it. But some people, this is the or maybe the only choice or solution or they may not know any better or whatever the case may be. So just communicate with them. Just get back with them, man. I mean, giving, letting them know you're getting back to them gives them peace of mind. You know, man, they may be in a place where they don't have peace of mind. OK, so I think you just getting back to them will give them peace of mind. And I'm not trying to be discriminatory. In it. I, I grew up in the ghetto. I still live in the ghetto. And I, I understand that, dude. If somebody just get back to you, it's just it's, 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 it's good knowing that out of anything you know what i mean hey man i know my landlord called me back in 24 hours and just you know if i have an issue he'll get with it you know what i mean number three is the extras number three is the extras some people don't want to do the extras some people may not even like what i got to hear about the extras but i think doing the extras uh it equates to longevity and keeping a long-term te tenant and some of the extras we do is have a washer and dryer in every unit so the tenant does not have to go and and travel off yonder to wash their clothes. We will give an air filter every year, you know? And then when we provide an air filter, we provide a reusable, rewashable one so they can wash and reuse it to keep their bill down. It indirectly shows what we care. So hopefully on the back end, they'll show they care about the property. So when you're investing in the ghetto, these are some keys, I believe, to success with your tenants and keeping long-term tenants which in the long run will have 
higher yield for you, um, less turnover on the property, which is higher yield. And it is better for you. Your tenant's happy. You're happy. Everybody's happy. Your asset is producing. So for the first thing is uh, tenants. Find long-term tenants. Forget the one-year lease. Throw that out the window. Let's do a th two, three, four-year lease. Okay? If they want to live in the house, let's get them to live in the house. Okay? Get good tenants. Like I said, there's programs, software, uh, websites to help you out. Section 8 is also a great program. Number two, communicate. Just communicate with people. Get back to them. Give them peace of mind. This should be with any tenant. Forget if you just invested in the ghetto. Get back with your tenant, period. It will get, get you better results, period. Extras. What extras can you do? What value add can you do? We washer and dryers, lawn care, air filters, light bulbs. Figure out what you can do. ThelonianCJones.com. Thank you.